Hey guys, this is Sammy Green and welcome back to another video. Now today is going to be a little bit of a different upload to usual. As you can see here, I usually do Bed Wars videos. Pretty much every single video on my channel is a Bed Wars video. However, I did say on one of my Twitch streams recently that if I hit 150k subscribers on YouTube, I would give you guys a little bit of a thumbnail tutorial. So here we are, as you can see, 151k subs. We uh, we hit that uh, 150k a couple days ago. So thank you guys so much, every single one of you, for contributing towards that. It is huge. Like I, That's massive to me. That's one of the biggest accomplishments. It's probably my biggest accomplishment in my life, this YouTube channel. So genuinely, thank you guys so much. I can't believe it. It's incredible. But um, I'm not going to bore you all with that kind of stuff. So let's get straight into the video now basically with my thumbnails i have three versions of thumbnails all right we have we have the oh i i need to upload this in like 15 minutes and i need to make a thumbnail so let's quickly just chuck some things together kind of thumbnail that's the, let's call that the tier one thumbnail then we have the tier two thumbnail where we're like we got a little bit of time maybe an hour to make a thumbnail i want to make it look good so here we go we'll get, give it a bit of effort you know it'll look all right and then we have the tier three thumbnail the one that takes a fair bit of time but also comes out well um so the tier two and tier three they're pretty similar in that I'm like, you know, I want to make a good looking thumbnail. I have a little bit of time, but the tier three thumbnails just work. They just work. They just look good. They just come off. Or as tier twos, I'm kind of like, I finish them. And I'm like, eh. anyway, I'm going to show you guys how my process is of making all of these and what really goes into it. There's uh, not that much work, really. It's I call it a free and easy way of making thumbnails, especially for Minecraft YouTube. If you're looking for thumbnails in general, I'm probably not going to be any help at all to you. But if you want to make thumbnails for Minecraft things, especially Bed Wars, I am your perfect person to ask. I mean, I mean, if you like my thumbnail style, which uh, has evolved over time, let me let me tell you, um, it has evolved very much. I I used to be quite bad at thumbnails, but look. Every single bit of things I know about thumbnails, I have learned and taught myself just by doing them. So if you think you're bad at thumbnails, don't worry. It won't be the case forever. You're going to get better at it, I promise. Because, like, I used to make that. That that was my old thumbnail, right? And now, now I make what I'd like to think is a little bit more inviting looking. I don't know. Anyway, let's get into the tutorial. We've already wasted two minutes talking about nothing. So uh, let's get straight into it. All right, so first of all, I'm going to show you how I would go about making this thumbnail here. I'm going to pretty much recreate this thumbnail so that you guys can kind of get an idea of what goes into kind of the, the main process of making that thumbnail there. So let's hop straight into the game and show you how I would do it. Alrighty, so for this type of thumbnail, it really doesn't matter what client you're using. For me, I normally would use Lunar Client because that's the main client I kind of go for if I want to do anything on Minecraft. PvP Lounge, I also use occasionally, but Lunar is probably the one I use the most. So um, basically, I personally go to single player. You can do it in multiplayer by doing a private game in Bed Wars and going like that way. But I have downloaded the Bed Wars maps um, into my, a lot of the Bed Wars maps, not all of them, into my saves folder, which I would recommend you do. Um, you can do this by just looking up um, Minecraft Bed Wars uh, download whatever online you'll get a youtube video it has got a bit of risk for getting viruses so you've got to be really careful what you're downloading make sure you're only downloading things from the actual mediafire website but as long as you get them successfully this is kind of what you're going to end up with so i think that thumbnail that we're going to kind of pretend we're making was on the pernicious map here and um this one was a little bit different because no that, that was what am i talking about it was it was crypt what, what am i talking about it was literally crypt okay now the thumbnail that i made on this one is a little bit different because as you can tell it's a uh, lucky block as the bed defense which was kind of clickbait uh i don't know anyway how i did that was i literally changed the texture of emerald blocks i remember i uh, i got emerald blocks here uh in the in the game and in my resource pack i just changed the texture of them to look like lucky blocks that's that's literally how i did it and my thumbnails are so straightforward i don't i don't even know why i'm showing you this i basically put the emerald blocks on here get, got the resource pack on now a huge thing about how i do my thumbnails a huge thing about anything if you're trying to take a screenshot in minecraft and you want it to look good massive massive d big deal here my opinion is to turn your FOV all the way down. I don't know why, but it just makes it look so much nicer. I just really like the look of it personally. Um, and then something I often do as well is I go ahead and go to um, quality and turn my custom sky off. Now, this will make sense later, because as you can see, obviously in the thumbnail we're basing this off, there is my sky, but I do turn it off in uh, the actual game and that will make sense very soon. So then after that, what I would do is I just go ahead and take the screenshot, that simple, all right? And then I can go ahead and change my settings back to what I'd normally use so that I'm not annoyed at myself. And then when you've got the sky back on, I just kind of like fly over to the side and 
Maybe turn my FOV back down, actually. Take a screenshot of that. And then turn my FOV back up, and we're back to normal. All right, and that's pretty much all it takes in the, in the screenshot phase. Uh, so let's head straight into paint.net. Alrighty, so now that we're here in paint.net, um, yes, I actually do use paint.net, by the way. It is a free program that I find a lot easier than um, Photoshop. Personally, that's probably because I'm lazy and couldn't be bothered to learn Photoshop. But if you're not very, like, experienced with Photoshop, I'd recommend if you do use Photoshop and you know what you're doing, use it. I'd recommend that. But if you don't know what you're doing for Photoshop, I'd really recommend paint.net it's easier you don't get all of the effects you can get from photoshop but it is a lot easier to use it's more user friendly in my opinion but anyway that's just my opinion um let's go ahead and i'll show you what you do pretty much all you got to do is go ahead and go to your screenshots folder and chuck in the screenshot you're going to use for the uh, thumbnail, which is this one we took here. Now, the reason that the sky uh, should be this guy instead of the custom sky that I use is because it makes it so, so much easier to just cut out the sky. So you use the magic wand tool here, turn down the tolerance a bit so that, as you can see, it's not selecting that iron, uh, those iron blocks when I, when I turn the tolerance down. So it's only getting the sky. And it's that simple just to delete the sky behind it. And then you can add the, simply add the layer of the other screenshot, which was the sky and move the layer below. And there you have it. it. It's what it looked like before, but it means that you're able to kind of mess with the background like this without touching the sky at all. So it, it, it's just basically a lot better um, for different specific reasons, but I'd recommend you do that so that the layers are separate because otherwise it can be annoying to separate them. Um, anyway, enough of that. Basically what I would do here is kind of just delete that. And then if I, if I was putting actual effort in, I would go ahead and um, magic wand all of this out but i couldn't be bothered because this is just a tutorial so there's no point in doing that but pretty much then i would go ahead and just select the sky sorry not the sky the island and i'd kind of mess with the size make it look kind of right and then add a little bit of a tilt to it actually which way did i tilt it yes i tilted it that way so you kind of add a little bit of tilt to it chuck it on the side there i'm pretty sure this is like pretty much all i did for this thumbnail it's as i said it's a tier one thumbnail it's very easy to do and this is pretty much the basis of the thumbnail done like that that's pretty much it the only thing now is special effects and color adjustments that's that's all i do after this and uh my procedures for this are pretty similar in all of my different types of thumbnails right so with this one what i do is basically just add a couple layers of the background this is how i get the kind of blur effect behind the thumbnail um which you kind of see the little blur kind of behind the um the subjects of all my thumbnails this is how i do that so i add multiple layers of the background and then i go ahead and with the bottom layer i go ahead and add a motion blur effect now what this does as you can see is it adds a little bit of a nice looking blur that kind of like blends it behind the background. It looks really nice. And then I might do that a couple times, maybe add a radial blur this time, which means it kind of, it blurs in a circle, if that makes sense. Um, and then I will kind of uh, duplicate it again. And with this one, it's a little bit different. I'll make it black and white and then go to the color um, correction and go all the way down with the brightness and all the way up with the contrast. Now you'll see on the right that this makes it pretty much pitch black, as you can see. It's a literal, except for that little bit there, which doesn't matter, it's just completely pitch black, and that's kind of the idea of it. Because then what you can do is add a little bit of Gaussian blur to that one, and that will give it a little nice shadow looking effect. Depending on how much you blur it, you can make it look really sh uh, shadowy, or it can be more of like a, uh, a concentrated shadow that's a little bit smaller, like that. And that's pretty much all it takes. Then you can merge the layers down so that the layers are all now compact as one and they work together. And that's literally it. The only thing now is color adjustments, which I do just by looking at the thumbnail, right? I get the levels uh, meters up here and I literally just kind of fiddle with them until I like the look of it. So maybe add a little bit of lightness there, get a little bit nice deeper colors, leave that where it was, go a little bit down that should be all right so that's good for that one then i go with the level adjustments for here and i don't have any like actual procedure as i said for the levels i just kind of fiddle with it till it looks nice um and you can kind of like play it by ear with what you reckon looks nice um yourself because if you think it looks nice the chances are other people will as well so there you go um and then the finishing touch is this saturation i pretty much just boost the saturation of everything i do saturation just makes things a lot more colorful as you can see and that actually i forgot to do it um i normally blur the background of course because that means it will add the focus towards the front of the screenshot which is what you want you don't want people looking at the sky it's nice in the background but it is not the main idea of the thumbnail which is why i normally uh add a motion blur to it and so actually i do sometimes do motion blur but i've been recently doing zoom blurs 
because actually sorry the reason you might be wondering why it's not doing anything the reason is because i've accidentally selected like four pixels here so make sure you're not doing that you can just click on it and it will select everything um to fix that but um yeah i do zoom blurs recently so if like the subject of the thumbnail is here for example which is where it is you kind of chuck the blur that way so as you can see it's kind of like blurring as if it's zooming off to the bottom left if that kind of makes sense and then you can add how much you want it to zoom don't go over the top if you're doing that actually that kind of looks a little bit cool but don't do something like that that just looks actually maybe maybe that looks cool anyway i only go for like around there kind of thing and you can mix different blurs together so that along with an unfocused blur could look cool. Um, maybe not that much unfocused. So like that, I don't know. It's, it's really up to you what you want to do. But that is the main kind of thing done. That's pretty much it. And um, there's only one thing left to do with this thumbnail and you might know of it from all of my thumbnails. If you have a look at every single thumbnail, what do every single one of my thumbnails have in common since like as long as I can remember, legit. Like, let's see. Let's have far back we... Damn, I've been doing it for so long. Here's the first one here. What do they all have in common? This little border here. It used to look like that, which is eh. But as I... I got better at it and did them more often as you can see they're all really thin and that's kind of just what I go for with my thumbnails just a little border I don't know why but thumbnails just don't look right without them to me I just really like the look of it um so yeah how I do that is I just go ahead and merge the layers so it's one layer then I'll simply duplicate the layer and mess with the colors so that it is very bright and a little bit less contrast right and then I'll do it again you just really basically just want to make it really bright like that it'll look terrible but trust me right then you move that layer above select the layer above select everything and move it 12 pixels down right and 12 pixels down i mean you can do as many as you want but i do 12 um now how i did 10 at a time is if you control arrow key it'll do 10 and if just one arrow key just does one pixel all right and then you go ahead and go to the right side and bring it to the uh, edge and then go 12 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and then do the same down the bottom like so and then you got that now that's not quite it because i personally have a um file that I use in my thumbnail folder. Nope, that's finished. Helpful stuff called black border. I use this in all of them and pretty much all I do with this is a little bit of a vignette kind of overlay and I just chuck it in the corners of the center image to kind of add to the contrast between the border and the actual thumbnail itself. Now, uh, you can do that with an effect. So as you can see, that'll be what it looks like. So I'll turn that off right now to see the difference. It's not huge, but it definitely adds to it. It makes it look like there's a bit of depth between these... Pardon that, sorry. There's a bit of depth here compared to without it, it's just kind of flat. If that, I don't know if that makes sense, but pretend it's not there. What you can do is you can add a vignette um, effect. I don't do this very often here. Uh, I feel like it's just, actually, that's just a bunch easier. To be honest, you could just do that. It'd be pretty similar to, hold on, that verse. It's pretty similar depending on how you do the settings. So that's how I do that. And that's pretty much literally the thumbnail done. As I said, this is one of the easier thumbnails I do. It's literally just a part of the map and then add a few effects. It's it's very easy. I kind of went very slowly in this tutorial. I kind of want to make it so that everyone is pretty much capable of doing what I do. Um, But if you're kind of better at paint.net especially, you're probably pretty bored, bored right now because that was pretty easy stuff. Once we get a little bit higher in towards um, the other stuff, it might become a little bit more interesting. But it's a pretty basic thumbnail, this one. But that's pretty much tier one. That's my little bit of a overview of how I would recommend you do that and uh, let's hop straight into tier 2. Alright so for this one we're going to go for a similar effect to that one there. So this is the video I played with Luke Ape um, and that is kind of what it ended up looking like. Now it's very similar in, in skill level to do with the other one. It's just a little bit more kind of uh, steps involved. Right so let me just quickly delete that and pretty much let's hop straight back into Minecraft. Let's go ahead and hop back in here and do it. This one I believe was done on Lighthouse. It doesn't really matter what you do it on. You can do it on whatever. Um, as you can see this little bridge here. Uh, I don't I don't know if you'd be able to tell but this little bridge here uh this little blue one is actually there because of this this thumbnail here there you go the more you know anyway um let's go ahead and show you what i do so pretty much with uh that kind of thumbnail what i would do is i would take a screenshot of myself take a screenshot of the background take a screenshot of the sky and then take a screenshot of luca or whoever i'm playing with now that would involve changing my skin to luca's skin and then taking a screenshot from there but for the sake of this tutorial i don't really care for what it looks like i'm more trying to tell you the techniques so I'm just going to use two different versions of my skin, all right, if that kind of makes sense. All right, so let's hop straight into it. Basically, first thing I do is, of course, get a screenshot of the sky, which looks better if you turn your FOV down a little bit. Screenshot of the sky done. And then what I would do is get a screenshot of me. And how I do that is, as you can see, there's a little bit of an angle of the skin. I don't just go straight front on because it looks really obviously rushed. So if you use any client, you can just use perspective mode to get a little bit of an angle on it. And it really does add to it. So I, I kind of like looked up like this 
way and then did that for this thumbnail i believe and i'm going to turn my fov down because if you think about it the lower your fov the better quality the thumbnail will be because you'll have to zoom it in less i don't know if that really made sense to you but of course to make it easier to separate turn the custom sky off because it's literally all like one blank color so that'll make it a lot easier i'm gonna look down that way a little bit and then you literally just take a screenshot of that um, I think my wings are probably going to get in the way and then i'll do the same but from the other side you could probably just flip the image but i'll do that as well there we go for the for the sake of this example i'll do that now keep your fov down and put these keep the sky off actually and for that thumbnail there i just got a little bit of a corner of um the map so i think i turned my uh render distance like all the way down and kind of just did that and we'll be able to use that anyway turn your render distance back up to whatever you use turn your sky back on you know what you're doing you know what you're doing and we basically have all of the screenshots done and it's time to start doing the editing all right so here we are back in uh, paint.net and of course first thing we're going to do is open up the thumbnail screenshot which is just probably i believe this one here oh wait no i probably want to use the sky as my base image okay so you got to also strategically pick what you want your base image to be um which for me would be sky for this one because it's kind of like the background it will make that's not the background that that's just not the background which one is it am i silly is it this one that's the other how, how am i getting this wrong so many times it's got to be this one what maybe it was the first one what am i doing all right let's try this one there we go okay so this is the sky <laughs> we eventually got there anyway then you want to add your layers from there of the ones below it like that there you go they're all added here as you can see wait i took two that's why i got confused i took two screenshots hold on so i'd recommend probably uh the first thing you want to do is get rid of the background with these layers so you can kind of just as i said in the last one get rid of the sky um and then obviously you can just get rid of the name like that and then get rid of the sky get rid of the name like that get rid of the sky so that's why i recommend you turn off your custom sky because it just makes it so much easier to get rid of the sky in the background and therefore i now have uh different as you can see i got that i got that I got that and I got that. So having it all split into separate layers just makes it your job a whole lot easier. So if you can make sure that that's easy to do with the screenshots, you're making your job a lot easier, basically. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move everything so it's kind of like what I want. So I can just kind of move that there. Just kind of organize yourself, basically. Um, chuck him over there. And just pretend that one of these is like the person that I'm playing with, not just both me, if that kind of makes sense. Because obviously I would never, unless I did like some twins video or something, I'd never do a, a screenshot with a thumbnail with both me. That's just weird. Anyway, anyway, so basically I would kind of disregard that for now because that's like a final touch kind of thing. And I would pretty much go on to using my first player model. Now, what I pretty much do is it's it's just really easy. It's it's literally let's have a look at what we did. We have them both coming up from the bottom left. So it's literally oh make sure you have the right the right one selected. There we go. It's as simple as just making it bigger, putting it on a bit of a tilt, and there we go. It's just like that. And then I do the same with this one, select him. All right, make him a bit bigger, put him on a bit of a tilt as well. Now, one thing I would note is if you're putting multiple characters next to each other, don't make this one smaller, but put him in front. That makes no sense. If you're going to make him smaller, put him behind him. That makes a little bit more sense. But with this one, I'm going to put it in front and make it bigger because that makes the most sense to me. Um, let's just do that. I think that looks all right. And then make this one a little bit smaller because I did go a bit big with it. There we go. Maybe ch we'll chuck it in the corner for now. You kind of just play around with it until you like what it looks like. Not going to lie, there's not much procedure in what i do i just kind of play it by ear now pretend that they look good it looks terrible because they're both me <laughs> so just ignore the fact that that's the case but the main thing i wanted to show you with this tier of thumbnail is that using um perspective mod to get a different angle on characters without having to use replay mod basically because replay mod's a little bit of a pain but um that's what i wanted you to get from that basically now all that's left to do is kind of add in the background image which oopsie daisy uh is pretty easy i'm just gonna chuck it like in the corner maybe give it a bit of an angle chuck it in there all right easy and then this looks okay but thumbnails are really really made by the effects which is blur and color adjustments this is not going to look very good because i really rushed this but i could make it look better if i wanted to i'm going to add a bit of motion blur actually with the sky because there's a lot of just blank sky and no clouds what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually enlarge in it and see when you make things bigger you need to remember that the quality of it will go down because it's bigger of course but a way to like completely disregard the fact that the quality is lower is just purposely making it lower by adding blur <laughs> it's your it's your best friend blur is your best friend i love motion blur as you can probably tell from my thumbnails anyway I do that. I uh, I want to add a couple of these ones so I can add a little bit of motion blur behind it. Don't forget to change the angle of the motion blur depending on where the thing is. So we add a little bit of motion blur there. Let's go like that. And then we'll make this one the dark one like that and add a Gaussian blur to it. It's a little bit extreme because it is. You need to remember if you want the subject, meaning like the most important thing of the thumbnail to be the players here, don't make the blur of this huge. Everyone will be looking at that as soon as they see the thumbnail. So make it subtle. Make it like kind of subtle. A little 
little bit of blur and you might even want to make the opacity of it a little bit lower so it's a, just really subtle basically then you can merge them together just like that i'm gonna add a couple of each of the player models actually i could probably merge the player models together as one there we go oh i duped this okay but now duplicate that a couple times and you can do them together you could do them separately if you want but i'm trying to save time here so motion blur behind player characters looks so good in my opinion um i think my first thumbnail where i discovered kind of using motion blur was behind player models with aesthetic and purple uh let's see where, where, where did i start to use see here i was using like no that was before that see back this is where i used to use like a white outline with a uh, black blur behind it but then i did a video with aesthetic and purple here it is this is where i kind of discover discovered motion blur and realized how good it actually looked behind player models so i kind of moved to doing that and i just i still agree it looks really good behind players there we go just do that now with this one now with the black uh behind it i can also if you want you can make it white by doing this right and if it's white it adds a different little effect it kind of like adds a little glow behind it so it's completely up to you you can make it white or you could make it black it, it adds a completely different effect but it's whatever you want all right then you merge them together that's that and it's all just down to doing the color adjustments. Alrighty, and there we go. Now, uh, something I do want to add is, although um, making everything look really nice and bright and colorful is something that you should be trying to do, you need to remember that you need to make your subject of the thumbnail, which is what you want to make stand out, stand out. You, you just want it to stand out, right? So I, I don't know if you would notice, but with this um, background part here that's just kind of there in the background, I made the level for it a little bit, that's the saturation, my bad. I made the level for it um, here a little bit lighter so that it's kind of, because in Minecraft, if you're far away from something, it kind of fades off and becomes a bit lighter so i'm trying to give that effect a little bit and then another thing you do, can do if it's just in the background is add a bit of blur to it but make like a really subtle blur for example like that so it's like kind of in the background but really subtle um and that's kind of that done and then of course all that's left to do is add the background uh the border that i do so i'll do that really quickly for you Alrighty, and that is pretty much that thumbnail done. It doesn't look great, because I did rush it, and there's two of me. It's kind of stupid, and they're facing the wrong way. I'd recommend if you're going to do two players next to each other, make them face the same way. The reason I didn't was because it would kind of look like just the same thing twice, because it was my skin. But think about it, when I was doing Luke Apes. Uh, let's see. It's, uh, I had us both face the same way, but we were different um, characters, so it looked good anyway. And uh, by the way, I did say it earlier, but if you want to know how to get two different people, it's easy. All you got to do is just change your skin and then do the same thing, but just didn't change my skin because I wasn't bothered because it's literally just a tutorial but anyway that is how i would do my kind of tier two style thumbnail and uh and, and now the last thing to show you is the high demand thumbnail the only reason i say this is because it does involve replay mod now replay mod is fairly easy to use especially if you're only trying to make th uh, thumbnail screenshots but it does take a little bit of work it takes a little bit more time a little bit more thought and you just kind of i mean it, it might take a little bit more experience I'd, I'd call it more difficult rather than more time consuming like this one was just a more time consuming version of the first one but this has kind of got a little bit more uh, uh, kind of experience behind it. Oh, another thing I forgot to show you is um, with the background, I, of course, I, I unfocus below this. Sorry, I, I should have said that earlier, but I had unfocus. It just didn't work. That's because a little bit was selected. Oh my goodness. I had unfocus below to the background because that way it kind of fades it. So yeah, that's, I don't know if I did that in the first one either, but that's what I do. Anyway, let's get straight back into Minecraft for the last thumbnail style. All right, so if you guys aren't new to my channel, you'll probably know I'm not an extremely big fan of Bad Lion. I don't like it very much. The UI is not very clean. I don't like the cosmetics at all. I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of things I'm not a huge fan about the client. However, it does have Nick Hider and it does have Replay Mod, which is why we are going to use it for the third tier of thumbnail. You could use Forge because Replay Mod is obviously available on Forge. However, Bad Lion is just easier to use than Forge. And to be honest, I'm not going to play on it. I'm just going to be using it for the thumbnail so it's it's not that big of a deal now how i do this is let me show you a prime example of this kind of thumbnail and that is my latest thumbnail which i use for my montage for 1200 stars in bed wars now with this one all it is is it's just a background with me jumping and a little bit of text it's really really easy but it gives a really nice effect especially if you use colors effectively and stuff like that so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how i do this one Let's, uh, for example, do this one with a waterfall map because why not? It's an example. As you can see, I'm already in position for obviously a thumbnail I have done previously in the past. <laughs> now, the first thing I would do when going into making a thumbnail in this style is you want the background. Without the background, you can't decide what you want the foreground to look like. So for this one, it is often just a little... Actually, I think I use high intensity shaders for this, yeah. Um, for thumbnails, for like the my montages, I often use better shaders and stuff because I just... On the 
whole want them to look more professional. Um, sometimes higher shaders look worse depending on how you use them, but uh, I'm going to quickly change the time in game so that, there we go, that looks a lot better. We can get this going. Once again, you're going to turn your FOV down to 30 and you're going to basically fly around until you find something that looks nice for a background. Um, waterfall is not a great map. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. This wasn't very good. I think I've done one like around here before for like when I found a wholesome player or something. Um, but let's, oh, well that, that's, that's nice. Um, so I don't know. The background doesn't need to be insane. Like this could honestly do. I'm honestly just going to do this maybe from a lower angle, get a little bit of the ground in. There we go. That'll literally do. It doesn't, you don't need to put too much thought into what the background is going to look like to be completely honest with you, because you're going to blur it out for the main part and it's not going to be important. Now, the next part of it is to go into creative mode. Um, oh my God, creative mode in Bed Wars. Oh my goodness. Clickbait. I don't know why there's armor stands here, but probably for the text or so. Wait, I can... Oh, that's awesome. Anyway, um, so wait, can I get rid of the text in that way? I hate this. Why, why is this here? Why is this here? Anyway, uh, I'm getting sidetracked. Anyway, basically, you want to pretty much put on gear. I have leather armor on the moment for the, a screenshot I did earlier for a different thumbnail. I believe it was also the wholesome one. But for example, I hit 1200 stars in my latest montage and I made the um, thumbnail for that color theme yellow. That is because 1200 stars is yellow. So let's pretend I've just hit 600 stars in Bed Wars. That's a red theme. So obviously what you would want to do is get red armor, which is pretty self-explanatory you just get a crafting table an enchantment table and some red dye you also want to actually get the armor because that's that's very important um and you chuck down the crafting table and the enchantment table now this is not how you have to do your thumbnails you can do whatever the hell you want but this is how i do mine basically that's what i'm kind of going for here um and pretty much you just make the armor red um i don't like that type of red it looks terrible why, why does it look terrible like that i don't know there's like some graphs you can look up online like graphics of different armor painting options like this doesn't actually look like bed wars is red color but it'll do for the thumbnail because as i said many times this is literally just an example it doesn't need to be perfect but i'd recommend touching everything up to be perfect if you were doing it for an actual thumbnail and then i always enchant the helmet because bed wars helmets are automatically enchanted every time you spawn um even if you don't have protection they have aqua affinity on them i believe so that's just a little bit of an extra little effect and then i also normally do iron bottom half because um you can <laughs> i don't know it looks like it looks more bed warsy okay so now that you've got kind of that down all that it takes is kind of being a model. Of course, I'm a great model because I'm so attractive and everything. And um, I'm going to show you guys how you do that. How I do that, anyway. Basically, you turn the replay mod on. I, you probably have a hotkey for that or something. As you can see in the top right, I just press P and we're now recording. So um, how I do that is I literally just like kind of run around. I normally go like near the edge of the map so I don't have to worry about trying to cut out anything but like blue sky because that's really easy to cut out in the paint.net. But anyway, I normally just fly around here, kind of like shake my sword around. I probably shouldn't have worded it like that. But like I look at different angles and stuff and do some blocking. I basically just give myself a lot to work with. Actually, I should be doing it this way because you need to pay attention to which way the sun is going. That's not, that does not look good. That looks better. So you want to do this kind of thing, kind of flying around, giving yourself the angles that you could get. And then you stop recording and you go ahead and go to the replay viewer. And this is where all the magic happens. All right, so as you can see, this is the replay of what we've just done. It'll showcase me running around a little bit and then flying over here because it'll be much better. Now, I would recommend once you're out to this step, what you want to do is go ahead and turn the speed to like 0.2 because that way you can kind of have a lot more of a chance to capture the exact right pose that you want and um, another thing I would recommend is you unfortunately cannot change your video settings while you're in the replay hard but turn your render distance all the way down all right because all that you want in this screenshot is the player you do not want any background so therefore there is no point to having your render distance up that way you can pretty much only see the player and get rid of the rest of it which is exactly what you want to do because as you can see if I do this all I can see is the player it's very easy to cut him out all right and now we're up to the last part of the screenshots and that is trying to <laughs> <laughs> trying to get the right screenshot. Now, this might take more than one attempt of recording um, replay mode kind of action. Um, it might take many. Um, for me, I'm going to just do the one because I, it's just an example. But um, I'm going to wait till I turn around to like facing the sun because that's what you want. Come on. When did I learn? When did I learn? Come on. All right, here we go. So now I'm facing the right way. Once again, I recommend you turn your FOV all the way down because it just looks better. I don't know how to explain it. It just does. But um, now you're kind of just trying to get the right angle. Um, Sometimes you want like that is something I'd pause it on occasionally. Actually, the sun angle looks nice there. I can probably roll with that. I can probably roll with that. We'll take a screenshot of that and see how it goes. Of course, we can always try again. But for now, we'll give that a go. All right, so here we are in paint.net with the background ready. Now, this looks all right. I actually do like the look of this background. This work um we're gonna import the um player model as a layer of course i don't like the angle i'm on i don't like that i'm gonna quickly change it a little bit and make my feet be at the same height so what i'm gonna do is i'm quickly gonna make my feet at the same height in the angle that i'm at because the way it is 
at the moment is that my feet are on a different, the angle is weird, the feet look like they're different sizes, it doesn't look good, I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to go ahead and add the new one where the feet are at the same level, because that'll make more sense, and we'll go ahead and get rid of the background, should be pretty easy to do, make sure you're getting little bits that might be cut off because they're intercepted, pretty sure that is pretty much all of it, easily cut that out, and uh, I'm not going to lie, I could have done better with this because it doesn't look good because of the background, because when you think about it, you need to make it look natural, and the angle that I'm on, it doesn't look very natural. But you can save that by blurring out the background and it won't even matter. All right, promise. I'll promise you. It'll, it'll look good by the end of it, trust. All right, now all it really takes is you just want to make everything look good. So uh, what I'm going to do quickly is obviously make myself bigger. <laughs> Wish I could do that in real life. And then I'm going to put myself in a little bit of an angle. I like angles. And I'm going to chuck myself on the side here like that. Now, actually, what I'm thinking is there is a lot of bare area here and I put myself right in front of a tree. What if I went ahead and flip? Can I even actually no I can't flip what I do is this there we go so if you don't know what I just did basically you can pretty much turn it around and then if you hold shift while sizing it it'll make it the same ratio as it was originally so that way you can kind of get it to flip um now people are going to judge me because it's in the left hand so what I would normally do is probably take a new screenshot obviously I couldn't be bothered right now so I'm just going to roll with that there this looks really bad I hate the angle I'm going to retake that I really don't like the angle I'm at all right, so let's press play again and try to get a better angle. This one might be better here. Oh, covering most of the face. You want to try to get as much of the face in it as possible. Come on, turn around. Come on. All right, this is probably going to be better. If I turn my head to the left now, please, please. No, don't tell me it's the end. All right, so that looks a little bit better. Yeah, I can roll with that. Let's let's do that. Let's try that. All right, we imported it. This isn't going to be perfect, but I'm not really trying too hard. All right, trust me. <laughs> But yeah, this is pretty much the main idea of it. So I'm gonna keep it that way. Let's do it. Let's do that. I'm running off the screen. Oh, I hate that the feet look. Why does the feet look like that? It's whatever. No, it's not whatever. Let's friggin' fix it. Okay, I got a much better angle. The feet are like split apart really nicely. This looks a lot like what I did for the um the 1200 star montage thumbnail. This pose here works really well for thumbnails in my opinion. Um, so let's see. I can either go like that or like. I think I like that angle. That angle looks nice. So we're going to screenshot that. We're going to chuck it into paint.net. It's all about trial and error here. Get rid of the background. If you press control and select an area, it'll add to it rather than... So if I just press that and I press that, it overwrites it. But if I control, it'll add to it rather than overwriting it. So that's how you do that, by the way. Get rid of the background and little bit of an angle chuck it away like that there we go now obviously it doesn't stand out like at all right now it looks terrible so the reason for that is because i've not added any blur or color effects so trust me it'll look better in a hot second now for um the montage thumbnails that i make as you can see i'll show you all of them they are thumbnails that i make that have a lot of um they often have words on them, like text. So they often have like the, the name of the song that it's made with or the amount of stars that I got for it or Final Kills, for example. They often have names. Now, how I do them is I steal images from a logo designer. <laughs> Um, the one that I use is this one. I just go in the room and edit logo and then I, I'm gonna make this one say tutorial Like so make it as big as you can before having to pay the font that I always use is luckiest guy It's a good font. I go ahead and make the outline size 3 and the second outline just doesn't exist I personally think this looks really good like that And then I want the color to be red because as you can see the thumbnail is gonna have a red theme It's got the red the red flag in the background Which I didn't even mean to do but it works the red uh, leather armor and then we're gonna have this as well Um now what you want to do is make sure that the background is transparent press next Next, and you can save the image just like this. It's great. It's crazy. As you can see, that's what I did for these ones. And um, I will go ahead and chuck it in. This doesn't have a folder yet because it's a new video. Thumbnail tutorial. Chuck it in there. And then from there, you can literally just drag it in and add a layer. As you can see, perfect. All right, now all I got to do is pretty much make it bigger. As it is a longer word, it's not going to look as good because with my previous ones, I could kind of split it into half i'm once again going to use my um 1200 star montage for an example i could put it as two lines rather than all on the one line making it look a little bit better but it's all right we'll, we'll roll with this it'll look pretty bad but we'll roll with it so we're gonna like i don't know i don't really know what to do because it's so long what if i what if i didn't do tutorial what if i did i have a better idea i have a better idea it's gonna work so much better all right this is my better idea instead of tutorial we're gonna do how to and that way I can save that, move it across into here, add layer. And what I would often do with this is I would grab the two and get rid of it. Control X, by the way. Oh, not like that. Control X means that you'll cut it and that way you can add a layer, Control V to get it back. And now it's two different layers. I'll add the two there, put it underneath. Ah, uh, above, yeah. 
I think above looks wait no underneath looks better we're gonna do that it looks odd I've never put how to in a thumbnail I, it just looks stupid but pretend for example I would normally do um, an amount of stars anyway we're gonna make it one layer merge it together like that and we're gonna add an angle to it probably that angle just like so this is pretty much what it's gonna end up looking like I'm actually gonna make it bigger something I like to do is put it behind the player I think that just adds nice depth to it and it looks really nice so we'll do that and now we're pretty much there all it is left to do is as I said earlier with all of the other two thumbnails it's literally just now up to making it look pretty with uh, blur and effects so with the blurs I will often add a zoom blur in a montage thumbnail and you got to keep in mind which way I'm running the character here is the subject once again so you want everything else to kind of like re revolve around the character so we're gonna make it look natural if I do this it's gonna look like the character is moving downwards towards the bottom left but if I do that it just looks weird all right so we kind of want to go like that because that way it looks like the character is kind of bouncing to the top right sorry the top left that's the kind of idea we're going for with that. All right. Now we're going to add a little bit of a unfocus. Uh, no, we're going to do a surface blur. It's kind of like a weird looking blur, but it makes it look nice. You don't really know, need to know much about it, but you can just frame it with blurs in your own time. Um, to that, there we go. And then now I don't really mess with uh, the text because it's already got a little bit of a gradient and background behind it. So that's cool. But now I'll mess with the character, add three extra duplicates of it, add my trusty zoom blur for this one. For this one, we're going to do that because that way it looks like I'm going going up towards the left as you can see this one going to add a little bit of motion blur not too much I don't want it to overwrite see this is completely overriding what I've just done with that um, so I want to make it a little one like let's go with that so there's a little bit to this side of it but not much and then of course we're going to do the trusty black outline to it like that don't make it too noticeable but that'll do and now it's literally just down to colors we're going to merge these all together and we're going to make the colors make it really make the character stand out here so with the background I often make it like kind of like lighter so that it doesn't really stand out as much i want the background to be this like you don't really take much notice to it basically and then i'll leave the text alone because it's doing what it wants and then i'll with the character you want it to be glowing you want the character to really stand out that's the main idea you want you want to be able to make the, the person who's looking at the thumbnail know what you want them to see they want to be able to tell what they want to see right so that's how you do that and then you add saturation uh that's needed add a lot of saturation to the character um, because once again that will draw people's eyes to it if it's like really bright and colorful that's how you get people to look at things and that's pretty much it this isn't as good as i I would have intended sometimes they turn out sometimes they don't but what I'd often do is like zoom out a bunch because thumbnails are really small on YouTube and you can kind of get an idea from that of what it's gonna look like now straight away I can see that I don't like the ground part of the thumbnail it just looks really odd so what I'm gonna do is make it bigger and kind of just eliminate it pretty much like that I can also tell that the player and the text are too far to the left like that there we go so that's a, a tip i'd give you zoom out because thumbnails are small and it kind of gives you perspective of what it would look like on the website so that's kind of the end result um and of course the last thing we have to do is of course add the border And there you have it. That's pretty much the end result of the thumbnail. I have made better thumbnails in my life, but this is definitely better than the other two we made this video. We can all agree on that. Um, so there, even, there are a lot of times I can mention that um, I have just completely scrapped a thumbnail, made it completely new. So just remember, it's not always going to come off straight away. You're not always going to be happy with it, but sometimes you just need to roll with it. And uh, just do what you want. Have some fun, experiment with it, and see where you go. This is what this one ended up looking like today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I helped you out a little bit. I hope you learned something. And that's pretty much me done. It's a free I'd say easy way. Let's say not complicated, but yeah, it's, it's a good way of making Bed Wars thumbnails. You could use this in other aspects of Minecraft. I just wouldn't be as good at it, but because I've always only, uh, uh, I've only ever done Bed Wars, so I'm kind of, that's like really the only thing I'm actually good at doing. Um, so that's what I do. That's how it turns out. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please subscribe, like, do all the fun stuff, and uh, follow my Twitch and Twitter and my Instagram down in the description. You can also add my Snapchat. I have a public Snapchat now. That's pretty cool. So you can add all of that, do all that stuff. That'd be much appreciated, and uh, that's pretty much me done for the day so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one have a good one